1996 V6 ES Mazda 626. This has rear discs on both the rear and the front. Picked up a tip from Eric the car guy. Mine aren't as nice as his, but put some rubber hose over your vice grips and clamp down on the brake hose. Hopefully you won't break it and that should pinch it off and there should only be a minimal amount of brake fluid loss. Um, you're still gonna have to bleed the lines after all of this. So as my friend Bullshit Corner says, let's stop fucking around, get to work. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is remove that brake hose, but in order to get the brake hose off, you have to remove that clip. The clip on the back of here, you'll notice, has a tiny little indentation so that you can put a screwdriver down through, walk it off. If they're not rusted too bad, you can just take a uh, pair of needle nose pliers and kind of walk them back and forth a little bit. I don't think this one's gonna work like that. Smack it a couple times with a screwdriver and a hammer, popped right out. Should be able to just grab that and twist that right out. Uh, you will need to use these, so don't lose these. Now this line should just come out, but if it's rusted in place, it's not going to come quietly. That is rusted in place. Now I'm just banging on the outside of this. I'm not banging where the clip resides. I just want to try and knock some of this rust off and I'm not actually hitting on the brake line. I'm going to be at this for a while. I'll be back. All right, I went in this direction, grabbed the bottom of it, and then twisted it back and forth and it broke all that rust free. It's fairly unusual for Florida. We all know this car has not been taken care of. You gotta expect to find stuff like this. Next is the clip for the e-brake cable. You gotta get that off, otherwise the e-brake cable is not gonna come off. Well, since this one's actually all lubed up with brake fluid, that's gonna come off pretty easy. Ugh, there we go. And this one's a different size than the other one, so you can't get these mixed up. This is where we're leaking right here. See, if I press down on here, I should just be able to pull out. There we go. That was the ticket. When you press down on here, pull back on the cable. It's not going to go out sideways. You have to press back and then sideways, and that'll release it. Now we have a 14 millimeter bolt here, and I've only got a 3 8 inch ratchet. Try not to hammer my fingers. There we go. And this other side should have a cap on it. It's a pain in the ass. Oh, there. Cap's in good shape. Don't lose that. Now, before I remove this top one, and this whole thing is going to be loose, I want to go ahead and get my brake line off now. We're going to take our vice grips, and we're going to clamp off that line. And the angle to get at that sucker is kind of odd. Put my ratchet right there. Didn't take much to crack that loose. If anything spills out, I'll just catch it with some rags. Expect this line to be clipped off, and if that line's not clipped off, then yeah, it's gonna make a big mess. Looks like there's a washer involved here. Nice thick copper washer too. And that was on the bottom side of the banjo bolt. Actually, it looks like there's a copper washer on both sides, and it's really hard to miss which ban which bolt is your banjo bolt because it's got a hole right in the middle of the bolt. Right there, it's a hole that goes all the way through. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> Now I'll go back to this 14 millimeter down here. And it looks like this thing is just chock full of anti-seize, just chock full of it. But someone's been in here trying to fix these brakes and they did not do it. There's two of them. Aha, uh -huh. I feel it loosening. Pair these two. And they're the same exact bolt. There's two of them. All right. There's the the whole caliper came right off. Now that we got the caliper off, we can just remove the rotor. Ta-da! You see the back side of the rotor is nice and shiny. The front side, is rusty. Give me the grand tour. I'll show you what's what behind the what what. Okay, this is your rear hub, and these are your rear studs, and you can take out studs individually from the back. You can basically hammer them out or press them out or press them in. So if you break a stud, not the end of the world. You can replace a single stud. This is the ABS tune ring. As you can see, that's the ABS sensor that sticks through the shield and it measures the spaces magnetically. Anything metallic gathers on that sensor. 
this is your dust shield you know these are really thin and really easy to bend so make sure something didn't come up hit it knock it and, and bend it into the rotor so make sure those are bent outwards I got off everything I needed to get off so let's take this off we'll go over to the bench and take a closer look here's the caliper this is full of brake fluid here and this is your bleed screw see I was used to the the fronts where on the fronts this caliper section folds up like this but here folds outwards from the bottom because on the front there's a screw here there's no screw here so it's only going to pivot on that bottom pin so it is different if you're used to working on the front brakes these rear discs pivot differently they're opposite this thing does not even want to pivot this thing does not want to come apart this thing is rusted shut I mean, I can get the brake pads out of there Just pop those off make sure you get your clips and your hardware brackets here this bracket is bent outwards I don't know if that's gonna be a sign of anything the pads look like they have they got plenty of wear on them uh, the minimum thickness is one millimeter and I think we got plenty more than one millimeter there so these brake pads are still good but this caliper is seized at the guide pin I can't I can't open it uh, I don't know if that's normal or not but I can't that's as far as I can open it I'm pretty sure that's abnormal that is that's it I'm pretty sure that this is the large guide pin and this bracket here should just come right off, right? This thing is stuck in place. This thing should just come apart. Right about here is where that leak, it wasn't leaking out of here and it wasn't leaking out of here. It was actually leaking down below the spring somewhere. Quite odd. I don't think that's normal so we're gonna go take off the other side and uh, we're gonna we're gonna figure this out okay here's the other rear caliper I could tell these have the pins in them because they're springy I need to legitimately try and get this thing to fold up and that thing's not coming off there we go oh what the fuck wow pretty sure it's because the caliper is fully this junk is just falling all out over the place. This one's got the pin, at least. One of them. Now let's see if we can open this. Uh, yeah, look at that. But, uh, but it's still not coming out. But it definitely opens way more than the other one. All right, now I am almost convinced that both of these are just shot because it's rusted at this guide pin. This is the main guide pin here, and these things are just rusted shut, and I had a heck of a time with the rust under there. Um, this car was from Ohio. It's been in the rust belt for a good long time, maybe the majority of its life. I don't know. This is not like working on my normal non-rusty 626. This is like a legit Ohio rust belt car. Good experience. Good learning experience. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of neat. I, I, I'm kind of enjoying it. Yeah, it's raining outside. These guide pins are just rusted. Jesus, no wonder. Yeah, these calipers are shot. If you have an opportunity to have these re uh, sent back in as a core and have a manufacturer remanufacture them and clean them and fix them, awesome. That'll keep more 626 MX6 probe calipers on the road. Do your cores, all right? Keep those cores out there. Because the next time you go to buy brakes and they say, sorry, we don't have any more calipers available. No one's been turning in their old ones. Uh, and then you're like, well, shit, I wish I would have started turning in my brakes. Turn in your cores, all right? All right, so rears, both shot. I just went ahead and took this off and unloosened that. And voila, that's what's supposed to happen. I couldn't even take out the pins from the other one. And these are nice and, and greasy, so that's a good sign. Oh, look at that. Look how easy that rotates. Look at that. See? That's what's supposed to happen. That's nice. That's a good break right there. It slid right off.
and the brake pads basically fall out right after that and then don't forget these little clip locks mm. you can see uneven pad wear here I mean it's not by much but it is it is uneven it's not right down the middle there it's slightly off that's how it's supposed to happen so I know I'm not crazy the other ones were absolutely seized up so maybe it has something to do with this little notch here because I could only turn it but so far. So now I guess I'm gonna call up my uh, local auto parts store and see if they have some uh, 626 brake pads in. Just your, your rear two are probably gonna cost you 20 bucks and then your front two are gonna cost you 20 bucks. So about 40 bucks in total for four sets of brake pads. Got a full new set of brand new brake pads and they're about seven millimeters. So we have seven millimeters, brand new, seven millimeters. So these were brand new brake pads that someone installed on the car. However, these things are hosed and they're hosed on one side of the pad. One side of this pad, brand new, unused. The other side of the pad, five millimeters. How does it break on one side and not even touch a pad on? Did they only replace one side? It's weird. I'm not taking any chances when it comes to my niece. She's getting all new brake pads. I can reuse some of the old mounting hardware. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to replace this, but if this is, I don't trust this. Because you can see it's like Gorilla glued on. There's nothing else holding this piece on. This has tabs, locking tabs on each side. So this will actually stay in place and lock on there. I'm gonna clean that up, you know, that's no big deal. I can clean that up. Oh, and in case you were wondering, an AD584, and these are for the rears, and the rears are smaller than the fronts. And the fronts are an MKD583, made in China. Yeah, I know, but whatever. You can see the size difference between the front and the back. Big difference. I called up a local shop that I know does rotor turning and they gave me a price, $15 per rotor. And just because I know that you're gonna wanna see a before and after, these have tiny little, it's got some grain in there. Tiny little grain. And here's the after. I've already got the other one on the car. I'll take it. So I'm gonna end that right there. I'm getting tired. Chloe's KL restoration day seven. Cool. We're going to get the rotors on tomorrow.